Good evening and uh, welcome to uh, our monthly meeting of the Hampton Beach Area Commission. Um, let me introduce uh, the commissioners, but before that, let's stand for the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. To my left, we have uh, Bob Preston representing the Chamber of Commerce, Dean Merrill, uh, our Commissioner at Large, Ann Marshan, our Secretary, John Nyan representing the uh, Town of Hampton, Fran McMahon representing the Rockingham Planning Commission, Chuck Rage representing Hampton Beach Village District, and Bob Ladd representing Hampton Beach Village District. We do have three excuses tonight, Rick Griffin, um, had a, uh, a meeting in Lowell that he couldn't change. Um, Bill Watson has been excused for personal reasons. And uh, I received a phone call about an hour ago from um, Mike Hosman from Dread, indicating that he got called into a meeting that he had to be at in Concord and that he would try to make it. But I basically told him that I didn't think the agenda warranted more than an hour. Um, so I told him not to worry about getting down here and having then to drive right back to Concord. Um, public comment. Mr. Preston. Thank you. <clears throat> Seeing Mr. Watson is not here tonight, I don't know if you can answer the question or maybe we get an answer by next month. Okay. And I was kind of trying to see where the status of the transportation grant balances or how much has been spent to date. I don't know if you have that or if we can get it for next month or something, but I, I would appreciate that. And someone made, if a layman made an appointment next month meeting, if there was room on the agenda, came in and made a quick presentation. Could some of that money be used for actual plans and engineering? If, um, you know, if the board or the board of selectmen or this board saw some, some merit in what was brought forward. And that's pretty much it. I have updates on that, um, Charlie, and I'll give them to you and, and to the rest of the commission under uh, our agenda. But I, I, I do have some quick updates um, with regard to our transportation plan, which I believe will answer your questions. Thank you. Okay. Next is the review and approval of the minutes of November. I'm assuming everybody got their copies. Uh, page one, page two, we have a, a, an edit. Um, unfortunately, uh, Mr. Ladd has not become a Lord yet, so he's now back to Mr. Ladd versus Mr. Lord. <laughs> so that's one change on page two. <laughs> Any others? Uh, I thought I had referenced the town side of Ocean Boulevard, not the ocean side in the comment after my name. Where was that, Bob? Would be the third last paragraph on page two. Page two. Okay. So, so it would be the town side. The town side. Okay. Okay, that's the second uh, edit. Oh, sorry. Anything else on page two? Page three. <clears throat> Page four. And then page five, there is one other uh, edit under new business site review. It, uh, Mr. Nine reported that he, Mr. Person, and Mr. Rage, not Mr. Merrill, that wasn't fair. Uh, met at Attorney L's office. So it's Rage versus Merrill. What a battle. <laughs> Kick me out all the time. Any other changes? Hearing none with the edits that we, uh, we've just made, do I have a motion to accept the uh, minutes as amended? I'll make the motion. Motion made by Mr. Rage, second by Mr. Preston. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Thank you very much. Next is, um, and this is just more of a, uh, an open discussion. Uh, I'm looking for some direction uh, from the commission.
commission in terms of what um, we uh, would like to do, should do, um, with regard to um, the New Hampshire capital budget coming up. Um, back, if, if you recall, back in November, we talked about uh, the possibility of the commission uh, sponsoring um, a recommendation to parks, uh, state parks, that they look at um, considering as part of their capital budget strategy is to set aside money uh, to improve the, um, the state park down at South Beach and then also take a look at the money that was earmarked in the original beach redevelopment project. I believe it was $1.5, $1.6 million to actually put together down there a uh, kind of a, a, a tourist uh, stop, bathrooms, a tourist center, et cetera, et cetera. I'm sure all of you remember that, that um, site. Um, the, uh, I've been informed by State Parks is that they have to submit in their recommendations uh, no later than April of this year for the capital budget uh, appropriations per agencies and departments within the state. And so that if we were to make any recommendations or ask state parks to um, consider anything for Hampton Beach, uh, we would have to do it between now and April. Um, and before we, as a commission, move forward, I would need discussion. And then based on that discussion, whether or not we move forward uh, to formally request consideration of putting money into their capital budget um, a strategy to incorporate a new uh, uh, area uh, down at the state park. Um, so this is a, a decision that the commission has to make. <coughs> the commission um, that I, I don't feel comfortable just recommending myself, so I'm going to ask for different opinions and um, feel free to give an opinion or say I don't have an opinion one way or the other. But I, I think we need to establish tonight um, a decision uh, because I don't want to wait to the last minute uh, to come March and say, oh, well, we should have done this, we should have done that. So, uh, Mr. Ladd, I know you're new to the commission, but uh, I'm sure you're very familiar with um, what's been going on down at the beach. I, I believe you're familiar with that component of the uh, redevelopment project that we had offered in the very beginning that was taken out because of money. Um, so my thought process is is that would you as a commissioner be supportive of this commission recommending to Dredd um, that they seriously consider putting money into their capital budgets uh, proposal to fund uh, that, if you will, that last component of the original beach redevelopment project? Yes, I would very much so. That's clearly a, an underdeveloped part of the beach. It's got a lot of potential. And could, could be another source of attracting people to the beach. Chuck. No, definitely we uh, need to move forward. Is there, um, is the number still viable that we have? Is there, is there, if you give them a number and they come in and can they do the project for that number, or can they do the project for less? I mean, do, where, where should we be looking? We're looking for a bathroom, visitation center, information center type of thing. That, that's what I understood, right? Yes. Is that correct? Yes. So we have to, and so we need a access in and out. We talked about that. But if we throw a number out there and it's going to cost 50% more or 20% less, I mean, obviously they'd like it to be less, uh, are, we, are we putting the cart before the horse? The original amount of money that was set aside for that component of the beach development uh, was, I believe, was 1.6, 1.7 million. Um, so, assuming that it's gone up, I'm assuming it, it would go up. So, we're probably talking somewhere now between 1.5 and, and 2 million dollars. Um, but we're also saying is that 
that original plan was going to open the door for us to create some type of public transportation component, whether or not it would be used in the very beginning, but have a mechanism there to create some type of public transportation from the state park down to the beach and back again. And I just throw that out because I think as part of our strategy in that area, um, you know, should we be looking at uh, trying to endorse something that was planned five, six years ago. So, Fran? Yeah, I don't think there's any question that we should pursue something. Um, it's it's always been part of our plan, and it, you know, there's no reason to not go forward with it. I, I guess I have a couple questions about a, a budgeting process. Is it a one-year capital budget, or is it a two-year budget like the uh, operating budget? Um, and, and does it make sense to phase whatever it is we ask for? You know, maybe we need to do the engineering in one year and the construction in the second year. Uh, and then as Chuck question, you know, what is the number? Do we have a better feel for what the number might be at this point? Um, the, um, the capital budget is a every two years. So it's a buy-in. So the capital budget that parks and all other agencies and departments would be putting in their budgets or their proposals for this spring would in fact be considered um, by where was the governor in December of 2016 go through the House and Senate um, process in uh, the winter and spring of 2017 and uh, June 30th it would be the capital budget would be adopted so what we're talking about is about a year and a half away from now in terms of it actually being incorporated but the planning process takes that amount of time. Right, so it's, it's, it's July it's 1, 17 to, to <coughs> June 30th of 19. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, so it's not every year, it's every two years. So, um, Bob? Well, <clears throat> there's no question that the area is being underutilized and it is the gateway to come into the beach, so it would be nice to see anything that would enhance that that south end of the beach. I'm not sure, you know, yet what you're thinking about putting in there. I mean, at one point they were talking a aquarium or something, and you know that was just an awful lot of money. You know, if you're talking about doing something to make the whole entrance to the state park look better, you know, I'd be in favor of that. You know, it's nice. I think I really think Ocean Boulevard should be our main focus. You know, as as a commission, but if this is something. You know, as an aside, uh, I'd be in favor of it. Dean? Well, I'm back on the, <clears throat> I mean, you mentioned the transportation issue. If, if that could open up a, anything to help things move slowly, you know, on public transportation, I think that it makes a lot of sense. You know, I think, it, like you said, it's so hard to work with this because you're, you're, you're doing this, you know, a pie in the sky type of thing. Of, what monies are out there? You know, if you shortchange yourself. You got nothing to build. You know. Let me refresh the commission on what my understanding was on that initial component that Bordelier had designed during the beach project. Um, that component of the redevelopment project was to house um, on the. Um, north side of the parking lot uh, at the state park, the north side, um, a building where you would go in and the best way to describe it is that if you did a mini um, uh, visitors station that you would see on Route 95 uh, coming in via from Seabrook uh, on 95 North. Uh, but basically being a, a mini version of that visitor's station to where you would provide bathrooms, uh, you would provide tourist information, um, and you would provide um, a place where people could um, 
get some type of means of transportation from parking in that location onto the beach. Those were the three major factors that was established back in the redevelopment uh, project uh, when Ward D'Elia uh, actually designed that piece of the overall solution of the, uh, the project. So it, it was really more or less a, a visitor station, uh, bathrooms, uh, a parking mechanism, a transportation mechanism, and, and also some type of uh, um, mini chamber of commerce site or a tourist site uh, where people could come in and, and uh, pick up brochures and uh, et cetera, et cetera. That was what the original design was. Um, and then over the years, we talked, as a matter of fact, last summer, we, we talked about even adding to that as suggestions from that committee that we had working with us from the beach, you know, adding a basketball court or tennis courts or, or something along those lines. But my thought process is, is that if we are going to look at the state park as a, a component of enhancing overall the beach, then something should be put into that. Now, to Fran's point, if we did it in a phase component uh, and, and base it over a four-year period of time uh, where we would be looking at you know, uh, engineering design and planning uh, X amount of dollars in this capital budget and then construction in the second capital budget. I mean, that's that's something that's doable in, in, in my, my eyes. But I, I, I guess like the seawall, if you will, um, that every two years there was so much money that was put into the capital budgets for the seawall and they, they did a certain section of it. And then finally, they were able to do the whole completion of it uh, in the final biennium uh, capital budget. As we're sitting here discussing this, I'm, I'm just thinking uh, or wondering, I guess, is uh, whether uh, we can somehow build a revenue component into this thing. Um, I'm not sure what happens out on the highways. If, if the state generates any revenue from, from what goes on there, um, and I know we hadn't talked about it in the past, mm -hmm. but uh, I guess it's worth looking at and thinking about um, as to whether that some way we can the state can generate some revenue so that it's a, a positive for them to do the uh, the upfront money on it. I, I don't know. I, and I, I think that's something we really need to talk about. Yeah. Um, so what Bob was saying about we should concentrate on Ocean Boulevard, but that's a different group altogether. We're talking about Fred, right? Mm -hmm. The Ocean Boulevard, we're talking about DOT, or is that well, how we should Dread work? at the state park, you know, when you say who's going to run it, I don't know that Dread wants to staff it because, mm -hmm. you know, they're looking at every every nickel all the time, you know, which they, which they should. And then if you say, well, the Chamber of Commerce, well, then I don't know if the Chamber of Commerce will have the money to staff it, or if they did, um, what the rent would be. You know, so that's that's a different. We're talking about two other groups that, you know, we don't really know which way they want to go. The transportation part, that's excellent. You know, and if you're going to do something like that, I think you'd probably want to try to figure out on Ocean Boulevard how that vehicle could get people up to the center of the beach quicker. You know, and if they <coughs> stuck in traffic, people would say, I can get off here, hop on that bus. You know, that's a great idea. I mean, to comment on Fran, uh, Fran's uh, statement, the only way I would think that there could be some additional revenue generated for the state parks is that if you tie it in with some type of transportation mechanism, that people will come and park their vehicles, so they'll for, therefore they'll increase their revenue in terms of state park parking for then that group taking the transportation vehicle up along the beach. And the other thing that occurred to me is, is vendors, but I know that creates a whole other set of issues with the with the businesses that are already on the beach and. Uh, <clears throat> So I know you have to be, yeah. you know, really careful thinking about something like that. 
but yeah, the parking certainly is a, 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 a potential source of revenue where you, you could park there and then uh, um, take a transit vehicle uh, to the center of the beach. I mean, if they were looking to, to rent space, I mean, we've already been through that with the that whole band shell thing and, yeah. and it, 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 the architect put spots in there but there wasn't any plan to figure out how to rent them and uh, it's been kind of a mishmash thing it, there needs to be a plan before you start thinking of putting something there be it a if you like out on the highway there's I think they rent space to a New Hampshire only shop or something um, but I think the one in Seabrook is just um, literature and, and bathroom facilities. I mean, the other option that the commission could consider is agreeing that something needs to be there. However, if we wanted to say, why don't we wait until the next capital budget process, which would take us into 1819, which is more than consistent with our transportation uh, money that has been set in the 10-year transportation plan. Um, you know, that $5 million that we have there, uh, we don't know. We, we know, in fact, that that's going to be a phased project because to be able to do Ocean Boulevard, we need more than $5 million. So maybe we just hold off on making any recommendations for this capital budget, but yet identifying that we feel strongly enough that there should be something, but to hold off to a to the next capital budget where we have a better understanding of where this transportation um, grant money is going to go. Not our transportation grant, but the 10-year uh, plant money is going to go, um, you know, for all, because that, that $5 million goes from the bridge all the way up to Winnicott. So we will have to hopefully make recommendations to DOT in 2017 of where that amount of money should be applied to as a starting point of the redevelopment of Ocean Boulevard. And, you know, we might have to start with from the bridge and go as far as we can with $5 million down along Ocean Boulevard. I don't know. So, so is there anybody that has any final suggestions? Uh, do we put it off for another uh, capital year? Do we we push dread to put it in this year, or what's what's the pleasure of the we commission? Put it off, it disappears. So maybe some type of for them to put some money in for some type of study mm -hmm. on what would what to move forward with it. Okay. But I think if you put it off. And then it, out of, it just it it's lost in the notes. Yeah. yeah. So it's if it's in the forefront <laughs> that this is something we're going to work on on that 2018-19 budget, let's let's let them come up with some ideas that we can help with. Maybe that part of Ocean Boulevard is going to change a lot in the next five to fourteen years. Mm -hmm. You know, it's going to change something when when you redo Ocean Boulevard, and then you know later on when you get to the bridge study. You know, that would be a big change. Yeah. For us to go and ask for a million something dollars and then, you know, have Concord state reps and stuff, so Hampton's asking again, is that going to screw us up when we go to ask for $5 million for Ocean Boulevard? But you could ask for out somewhere in thousands. You could ask, you could ask the husband what they, what they think, right. you know, if they want us to make a pitch. All right, well, it doesn't seem like we have a real strong consensus. So why don't we do this as, a, as an option? Why don't we um, get together be between now and the next commission meeting, which is in February, February 25th, um, and talk to Dredd and kind of get their <coughs> feeling on what they would consider funds set aside to do a study uh, to keep the discussion going. Uh, no funds at all because, you know, as Bob said, it, it, things are going to change so much. So maybe get 
their opinion, and then in February, we'll take a vote on what we would recommend uh, from a commission perspective. When do we do that? Does that sound right to everybody? Yep. Bob? Fine. Okay. Brad? Dean? Okay. That's what we'll do then. I will uh, I will get a meeting going with Dredd to uh, share with him our comments tonight and then go from there. That's the only thing I had on my uh, report. Uh, the treasurer's uh, Mike did when he called, told me that there was uh, no changes in the uh, budget. So we still have, as of uh, right now, um, eleven thousand eight hundred thirty-nine dollars and forty-nine cents uh, left in our budget. And as you will see by uh, that, I have a new business, um, a um, an agenda item that's going to talk about looking at fundraising to increase that. Uh, uh, money in our account. Um, under old business, yeah. some transportation grant updates. Um, first of all, I know we didn't meet in December, but I believe all of you heard and um, <coughs> found out that we, in fact, uh, by the Executive Council uh, vote, uh, they had put in uh, a little under five million, between five and six million dollars, excuse me, between five and six million dollars uh, into the New Hampshire uh, transportation 10-year uh, plan. Um, we had uh, requested that amount, but then we were told that it was probably going to be one to two million. But lo and behold, uh, with the help of uh, Executive Council Sununu, uh, we got it up to uh, that five million mark. Um, so, and that has been earmarked for 2018-2019. Um, that has to do with the transportation plan itself. The other thing, and I'm, I'm skipping over a little bit for a minute, but let me stay with the transportation plan. Another, and this was somewhat of a surprise, um, that when the executive councilors submitted in their plan to the governor, who basically then has an opportunity to uh, review, uh, add, delete, make changes, um, when it came to the line item that referenced the Seabrook Campton Beach Bridge, um, in the 10 year plan, it still talked about a seven to eight million dollar rehab, and it was earmarked, uh, I believe it was 2018, 2019. The governor took that item out of the uh, plan and replaced it with the proposal of a brand new bridge, reconstruction of a new bridge, um, that uh, was going to be based um, on a three-year plan, 2025, 2026, and 2027. The value, estimated value that DOT has calculated as of this year was to be about a 35 to $40 million construction project. Um, and that um, the initial engineering of that type of bridge um, with a, still a lot of details to be worked out but from what I've been told um, that was explained to uh, me through DOT that the governor wanted this to happen was that the new bridge once again would be reconstruct uh, would be constructed over a three year period of time it would be a three lane bridge giving the opportunity uh, for people, uh, for traffic control to, to have two lanes coming in, closing off one lane, two lanes going out, that type of thing. Um, it also indicated um, that um, the bridge would be constructed on the west side of the original bridge uh, where I believe, and this is before my time, but where I believe the original bridge was, um, and that a very 
important piece of the construction would be that it would be built high enough to where you wouldn't have a drawbridge and that um, there would be constant traffic. Um, and the last element that I've, I've been, I was told that would have to come into play would be that in order for the bridge to be built high enough to where it's not a drawbridge, you would have to extend the bridge on both ends in terms of the, the way the, the engineering would be so that you would have to take and the feet number that was told to me was about 200, 250 feet on both sides of the bridge would be an extension of people, you know, the, the, the actual bridge coming, uh, going on and getting off. Um, and so if you look at it from the Seabrook side, uh, the west side coming into Hampton is really the sand dunes area. Uh, and then on the west side coming on the other side, on the Hampton side, is that strip of land that we have been talking to uh, talking about that has been underutilized. Um, and that would be how that would, would flow in to whether or not it reaches all the way down almost towards Ocean Walk um, in terms of to where you're getting off the bridge and then the tra flow of traffic or whatever. Um, that's as much as I know at this point, but I, I wanted to share that with all of you that this is a major change within the 10-year plan. Um, whether or not it will be supported by both the House and the Senate, um, I'm not sure. Um, whether or not the commission feels one way or the other, I'm not, excuse me, I'm not sure. But I know that um, that, uh, that plan has now gone to the House um, Committee. Um, I think it's on House Committee on Transportation. So over the next couple of months, it's gonna go from committee to committee, voted out of the House, voted into the Senate. I'm sure that there will be other things that will be added and deleted from the overall master plan. Um, but um, I just wanted to let everybody know that um, and that that would be uh, if it if it if it does pass and the governor signs it, um, then it'll be a bridge that will be built once again in 2025, 26, and 27. Comments? Anybody have any thoughts, comments on that? Initial comments, feedback on whether or not the bridge is something that we should have as a brand new bridge or anything along those lines, or is it too early to tell? So you're saying two, 200 yards on both feet. sides? Or four, feet. Feet. feet, but on both sides, or four, a total of 400? Okay. I just wouldn't put a lot of stock in those numbers at yeah, this I point. Know. This is really soft at this point. <clears throat> I agree. Um, so. I agree. <laughs> but I think it's, a, it's something for us to think about because as you saw in one of the comments that I had made in an email that I copied you all on today to William Rose, uh, our project manager at DOT, that um, we need to start thinking about, um, you know, in our recommendations of Ocean Boulevard um, and the transportation grant under transportation, how does the bridge come into play with Ocean Boulevard? Uh, that's just, I, I think, you know, they've, they've talked over the last couple of months, if you recall, they said, well, there is, VHB is doing a study on the bridge, and they're also doing a study on Ocean Boulevard, but neither one has been joined yet, and I, and I think we really need to take a look at how do we join that now. And that was one of my requests for the meeting with William Rose, is in terms of how does that all come into play? I don't know, so. It probably, well, in my mind, it raises some land use issues as well you know if you go with a fi fixed bridge it may impact what you do inside the bridge uh, on both the Seabrook and Hampton side with the harbor you know um, I mean that changes the game substantially a fixed bridge it changes what kind of um, boats you can bring in there perhaps mm -hmm. depending on the height 
infrastructure. So you, 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 it, it, in my mind, it sets up a whole lot of land use questions. Um, what the impacts are up upstream from the bridge, uh, or might be upstream, and, and you you really want to think those through. Um, you know, on the Seabrook side, where the where the fish uh, pier is, I mean that potentially could be developed as something. Right. You know, I don't know what. But, uh, I don't know that that was built well enough to last that long. No, I understand that. That was a different I mean, story. Yeah. You know, that piece of real estate. Um, and they'd have the public hearings for the fishermen, you know, that that whole fishing business is under a lot of stress at yeah. this point now. The families that have been there, you know, aren't going to be around forever. Yeah. And people coming in and buying those businesses, you know, uh, I think that's probably unlikely, you know. So the boats can only be so big because there's not, you know, the water's not deep there. They're constantly dredging. So there's there's a whole lot of stuff happening. I'm just suggesting the yeah. decisions need to yeah. be, you know, you can't do one and then say, oh, gee, how are we going to do over here, you know. But one of the things we have to be sensitive to, and I, and I, and I go back to this point, is through our transportation grant, um, because we might not have an opportunity in the future. Through this transportation grant, we have to take a serious look at our master plan under all of the components of transportation. To me, the bridge falls into the transportation category. So that whatever final recommendations that this commission makes this year, within probably the next six months, of any changes and modifications to the 2002 Hampton Beach Master Plan, uh, we will have to at least address the bridge and what the, because I believe, and, and feel free to correct me, if, but I believe in the original Master Plan, it, it talked about a bigger bridge. It talked about uh, construction of a new bridge, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it's going to be an area of the master plan that we we would have to say uh, we agree with or disagree with, similar to the Ashworth Ave scenario, where the original master plan talked about making Ashworth Ave two way, and and it was it was never and doesn't appear it's going to change. So that's that's a change that we have to seriously look at from the master plan. So I just bring that all to your attention. That somewhere over the next couple of months, up to the next six months, we're going to have to make some some commission votes, if you will, on what we uh, keep, what we change, what we edit uh, on the master plan when it comes to transportation. So I just put that on the table. Well, that's what I was saying earlier when we were talking about you know, making changes and budget changes in the state park, because if that bridge lands 250 feet further, the entrance to the state park it doesn't exist. could be that one they missed. That's going to be a, a part of the road. So you're going to be down to almost the Marion Motel, yep. maybe for the entrance or a U-turn or something there. Yep. There's just going to be so much of that happening, how Ocean Boulevard connects to the bridge, to the state park connecting to both. Right. You know, you're going to have some long, good meetings, you know, kicking around on what the best way to go forward will be. Any other comments? Um, we did receive, uh, as you know, we, we did have a very successful meeting with VHB and um, uh, William Rose, and um, we met with uh, town officials that included uh, the town manager, police chief, the fire chief, um, and the Assistant Director of Public Works. Uh, we had that meeting in December. Um, one of the to-dos that came out of that meeting was that um, all of them went through and heard the presentation that we have all heard now three or four times. Um, they had made some initial comments, uh, but then the action item was for them to go back and think about what was said and to submit in, in writing any of their thoughts with regard to the recommendations to date on um, um, the, uh, the transportation proposals that have been presented to the general public. Um, what I sent out today 
was uh, written documentation uh, from the town manager, from uh, Jennifer Hale, the deputy director of public works, and also from the fire chief. Um, I did get verbal comments from the fire uh, from the police chief, um, and I've given all of these um, uh, documents to you for your review. Um, I wanted to share them with you prior to sending them up to William Rose. Uh, and asking him to share with uh, Gordon Liddy uh, with regard to additional comments to be added to all of the comments that have been made to date uh, on their different proposals. Um, I think one of the things that um, these uh, emails and reports would suggest um, is that overall um, there's um, a, a strong feeling by departments of the town that uh, Ashworth should stay one way. Um, uh, there is another uh, opinion that uh, north of the Ashworth Hotel, uh, I think um, if, if you read between the lines of these different, uh, everybody would be in favor of moving the traffic flow and the parking from the center of uh, Ocean Boulevard over to the uh, beach side and the, the, having the traffic flow there. There's been some discussions about the roundabout <laughs> um, down in that area, et cetera, et cetera. But I will, uh, I will forward these comments on to be added with all of the additional comments uh, to Gordon Liddy and uh, VHB. Um, the other things that I have in terms of updates, um, once again, as you saw from the email that I sent to William today, um, <coughs> I can't believe how fast the month of January has gone. Um, I was really hoping to have uh, some discussions with him during January so we could talk about it at this meeting, but that didn't happen. So I have uh, asked him for two things. One is to have a meeting with him uh, to go over a whole bunch of uh, line items that we really need to set uh, in motion for 2016, especially a uh, where are we at with our spending, where are we at with our in-kind, uh, where are we at with um, things that the original project plan, that document we all have copies of? Uh, where are we in terms of the 2015 task um, that were, were supposed to be completed in 2015? Have they been completed? What are the tasks that are required in 2016? Um, and what's the project plan to, to get those tasks completed? Um, so I, as you know, in that email, I think I had eight or nine items uh, for discussion, um, and I'm hoping to get all of that uh, started and, and move forward, and then for him to come in at our meeting in February to give the commission a full report on exactly where we are today and what are some of the other things that have to be done in 2016. Um, I think it's important for us to stay on top of William and DOT. Um, we have to uh, remember that they work for us, we don't work for them, um, and that, um, you know, it, it will be important for them to stay, um, keep us informed of, of all of the things that they're doing. Um, the other component, which I think is very, very important, and uh, Charlie had mentioned it in his public comments, was that even though that as of right now it's still a little bit early to start thinking about how do we use that second part of that grant, approximately $150,000, but it's, it's, it's not too early to start at least brainstorming over the next couple of months on some of the things that we have seen through transportation and what would be some of the eligible activities and products that we could in fact uh, incorporate within the grant um, as, well, I guess you would call them demonstration grants, pilot projects or whatever, so that we have a clear understanding of how we plan to spend that 150000 or so. Um, so I would, uh, I would suggest and I would plan for the month of February's meeting to have a very thorough discussion around our transportation grant um, and to, uh, to get further updates on exactly where we're going to go and, and do. I would also ask the commissioners to start putting on your thinking caps with regard to uh, transportation related. And, and once again, I think this is a kind of a 
a, a whiteboard in your own mind process where you throw things against the whiteboard and some might stick, some might not. So uh, anything that comes to mind that might be something, be it transportation, your, um, you know, uh, coastal or uh, some type of transportation plan to provide shuttle service from downtown Hampton to the beach, whatever. Um, I think it will be important in the month of February at our meeting to really start talking uh, about these these different types of thoughts and activities. Any comments? Where was that intermodal idea? Is that gone or is it? Right now, from what I understand through Rocking and Planning Commission, um, is that um, it's kind of on a shelf because the next step is that they have to come up with additional money for the next engineering design step. Uh, I was going to say that I know that they're going to be presenting to the Board of Selectmen on the 29th of February. Um, I didn't note that at our last planning board meeting. I had heard from uh, Scott Bogle over there. So they're at a point at least where they're going to present their study to the Selectmen. So, of course, this commission will be encouraged to attend that Selectmen meeting as well. When is that? The 29th of February. So. And are they coming in with, do you know what, what the... I don't know a tremendous amount of detail at this point. I know that they were ready to present, and that's something we had talked about about a year ago, having them do They just weren't ready at that time, and supposedly, I had a call, and supposedly they were ready to do so, so they coordinated that with Fred for the uh, Board of Selectmen. And so all I know is that there's a meeting on the 29th at this point. I'm sure we'll get more information okay. as that draws closer, and I'll let you know if I hear anything. Yeah, would you, would you keep, keep the commission informed of this or that? Yeah. Um, and see how that is going to play out? Yep. Yeah, the reason I say that, if we didn't have some other ideas of what to do with this money, you know, that's a natural for having parking and, and transportation. And maybe if we weren't using that money, we could use it to help for something there. Yeah. Make sense? No, no, no. Yeah. no. Yeah. I don't disagree. Yeah. I mean, the other thing, too, and, I, and once again, I just throw, it out, throw this out as an example. If you listen to Public Works and all of the different things that they were saying that really needs to be done, and if, if I'm not mistaken, they have about $5 million worth of warrant articles uh, on different Public Works projects, one of which I think has a direct impact on the beach, and that's Kings Highway. Um, and they don't know, they're, they're putting in, I think it's $40,000 to start the engineering process, uh, engineering study process of drainage. Um, and and whether or not, I mean, since Kings Highway falls within our parameters of, uh, you know, the, the, the beach, uh, on whether or not something like that should be looked at as uh, a financial support, depending on what comes through the warrant articles. So, I mean, once again, that's just an idea. There, There's different things. I, I, I picture... You know, once we get a clear understanding of how much money we're going to have to play with, it's almost like I can picture it like almost like requests for proposals coming in. Yeah. Well, we need ten thousand for this. We need fifteen thousand for this. We have this idea that's going to be twenty thousand, and then it's going to be up to the commission, uh, along with DOT, to help try to figure out what we see is the best use of that hundred fifty thousand dollars. We've taken such good advantage of Bill Watson's knowledge and everything he does with DOT. I wouldn't want to break away too, too far in, in local stuff unless he said, you know, go for it. You know, I just think we've got a good rapport with DOT. we got to keep it going. I would argue that 100%. I mean, uh, the Ocean Boulevard, to me, is you know, number one. Yeah. And it, it needs to stay there, yeah. yeah. All right. Um, any other old business? Uh, Chuck, in November you talked about um, trying to get a meeting with Coastal Transportation. Anything happen from that? Never, never returns calls or emails. <laughs> really? I do have, uh, I'm working with somebody else, which I don't really know a lot about yet. Some other plans, hopefully that'll come to fruition. 
problem is, is we have our budget to worry about, and if we were to put something in there, then we need numbers, and uh, at this point, our budget's gonna be set in another couple of weeks, right? Yep. So. Uh, okay. It's kind of a, timing is not always easy, so I don't know, I don't know how far we can go this year with it. Yeah. Any other old business? New business. Um, we do have a request. Um, Chuck, you want to just talk uh, very briefly about it, uh, that we're going to be setting up a meeting with? Right. So I, I talked to Al Flurry, and he uh, he's the owner of uh, Bernie's, and he's bought two adjacent properties um, that was owned by the royal family. Um, he's got some great ideas to expand Bernie's, uh, kind of... Uh, kind of um, do more decking and um, by by setting it up the way he's talking is to make peace with the neighbor with the noise level by closing it in kind of making it a little bit of an amphitheater type look uh, and it'll he'll be able to continue his entertainment but not disrupt the neighborhood so hopefully that'll uh, that'll go through so we're gonna look over the plan and give our recommendations and uh, either work with what he has or give him recommendations and, and endorse it if it's right or I'll go from there so um, I think uh, his attorney attorney Els wants us to meet up and uh, go over the plans so um, we'll do that next week yeah, so. yeah and uh, just as a follow up to Chuck uh, I ran to Al um, earlier this week at uh, Galliach and he reiterated that he had talked to Chuck and that our subcommittee, you, myself, and Bob, should plan to uh, meet with him sometime next week to, to review his plans. Because he has a um, planning board meeting coming up. Um, well, he, I, can, I can answer that. He's okay, submitted yeah. an application, and he he's with the PRC right now, and we just had a meeting uh, yesterday okay. with him. It's, there's going to be a okay. second PRC on this in March, so he's probably looking in April or so by, when he gets to the planning board, probably the first meeting in April okay. at this point, it appears. Uh, will there also be requirements for zoning variances? There could be. That's still kind of up in the air. We're trying to work out an impervious surface question involving the deck. Um, so he's supposed to provide additional information on that. That was one of the outstanding items from the BRC meeting. But um, so that's that's to be determined. He may be able to get around that, but that's still to be determined. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, let's let's get together with him and, and see what they what he has to offer, and then we can make a recommendation to the commission in February. Okay. Um, an FYI. Every year, as you know, we have elections of officers. We'll be a month behind, uh, so I really need to have elections of officers for 2016 uh, next month. So if you are interested in holding a officer position on, of the commission, please let me know, and then we'll take it from there. My next uh, new business is something that Mr. Preston had mentioned last year that I wanted to follow up on. Um, although we have $15,000, I'm sorry, $11,000 in, in our Beach Commission f account, whether or not it would be um, a good idea that sometime in 2016 we look at at least one small fundraising event or activity sponsored by the Beach Commission to see if we could put a couple of thousand dollars back into our account, get it closer to more than fifteen to twenty thousand dollar mark, as we had originally had it, um, and I'm open to that. Um, you know, from actually having a uh, a fundraising event versus just going out and soliciting donations. Um, I don't know, but I I, I want to put it on the table tonight. Uh, just for any initial discussions, any ideas, thoughts that we may have um, along those lines. And once again, it's not a, uh, a must have. Uh, it's a nice to have, but it's not necessarily a must have. But since we did create uh, for the first time in the commission's history an actual uh, financial account, whether or not we would want to keep, keep that going, um, because if we do need money to match, uh, other projects like we did this summer 
employee, put in a $4,000 uh, contribution to the town for our traffic study. Um, that money will go fast if, if we don't have um, plans to increase the budget. So. Mr. Preston, since you, I think, were the first one to bring it up as an idea, do you have any further ideas, any suggestions that we might want to look at in 2016? <laughs> yeah, I do. I don't want to go out and ask for money because we're all doing it all the time. We're all getting calls all the time, you know. So I, I think sometimes they go do raffles for Harleys. I just as soon see somebody have a raffle for, you know, $10,000 or something, and you can buy $100 tickets, and, you know, you can email those out, and you keep half of what you get you know and you don't have to pick the date when you're going to do it you just say once we've sold enough tickets we're going to have a party on chuck's deck and we'll have the drawing there Sounds maybe good. the winner you know will be there yeah. and I, I think that's easy to do because you can do a lot of that stuff with the emails and around town i think a lot of people would want to support it and they you know they're getting a chance to to get some money back it's easy Any other ideas? It's better than selling cookies. <laughs> it's better than selling cookies. You can't, cookies? Compete with, you can't compete with the Girl Scouts. So. <laughs> so. Salt water taffy. Let me, let me recognize Mr. Preston in the audience for a minute. I, I didn't want to talk about an idea for that, but I just want to talk about something that was time sensitive, maybe. <clears throat> and the only reason I ask is. Uh, I tried to look for John, Linda and John Gephardt, and I don't know, Mr. Chairman, if you might have contacts with Bob or Chuck Mike, but I saw something on NH1's homepage, and there's some money under the moose, uh, moose license plates, the conservation plates, and there's money available for, like, beautification things, but there's a time-sensitive date to submit that's, I think, in the month of February, and that it's a letter of intent. And then there's also a final application date. I think it was like April 25th. But thanks for opening it back up so I could mention that because it's time sensitive. And the get pass might already know. Might, this might be old news to them. Okay. But it's just something we might want to you know, see if we can get in touch with them. Okay. The other thing was, Mr. Chairman, if, um, Senator Stiles is filing the bill for the state box plates. I brought it up at the HB Village District meeting the other night. And what it is out of the, the seven-month season is 210 days Dredd has at the meters. If this passes, and I'd like to say, like I've heard you say before, we need to have a campaign, you know, for, for the beach. We need a campaign for that. Anybody that knows any state reps or senators anywhere in the state to push for that because what it'll do, it'll give you parking rights for 82 days if you pay that $85 for the state box at every meter in the town of Hampton. And you'll be hitting a group of people that is different than what comes in the summer and the weekends and the holidays. This is, these are weekdays. So everybody will be able to go down and patronize Monday through Friday in, from September 15th to June 15th. So I appreciate any support. Spread the word. Thank you very much. And thank you, Chuck. Okay, so Mr. Preston, um, since you're the one who's been very vocal, vocal in, 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 in terms of ideas and thoughts and stuff, I'm going to put you on um, as a chair of the uh, subcommittee uh, to where you can come and make a, a, a formal proposal next month to, Don't you want? to do this, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? And we have to have money to pay in, right? Yep. Yeah, we, we have to keep in. So, <coughs> all right. So Mr. Preston will be in charge of our fundraising for 2016. Any other new business? Hearing none, um, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn at 810. Motion made by Mr. Mann, second by Mr. Merrill. All in favor? Aye. Those, thank you. Channel 22, thank you very much. See you yeah, next I mean, month. You